talk about fees, these are your transaction fees. Transaction fees that is embedded within the system and not additional calculation after your transactions. What do I mean? I mean, if I have row one tokens, I have Lisa tokens, I want to trade. If we have um, external fee, it could be something like, you know, a fixed fee of 0 0.03 row one per transaction. Or we can have an internal fee where we embed the fees into transactions. So for external fees, that's in general what you get for a lot of these systems out there. So for example, Bancor, Uniswap, they have a fixed fee for every transaction. So it makes sense if you, if you are a, a big trader, arbitrage trader, you trade a lot, a lot, a lot of fees, and then you're just paying a fixed fee of a small amount. Whereas internal fee, it's, it depends on the size of your trade, it depends on the depth of the liquidity, and it, it benefits differently. So external fee, you know, it's good, good for traders, especially big traders. And then our internal fee is good for liquidity providers. Okay, so this is the main big difference, your internal fee and your external fee. Now that we got that out of the way, let's look at how they decide to deal with this fee. Of course, nothing is so easy as in I'll tell you what the answer is, because the reality is that the fees is a spectrum. The fees is a spectrum. So we have our constant market maker spectrum. And so this would be like your Uniswap, where your fee is external fee. External fee, zero internal fee. And then the other on the other end of the spectrum, you have CLP, continuous liquidity provider. I think that's what it's called, a liquidity provision. And this is I think it's zero external fee, but you have yes internal fee. An example of this would be ThorChain. Someone asked me to do ThorChain like a long time ago. I will get back to that. It's just a lot of things on the list of episodes to make. Okay, so basically, what I want to what I what ThorChain does is that it is. This is the lower bound, so this is your lower bound. And this is your upper bound. So your fees will be somewhere in between this line. Do we know what the exact fee is? It, it really depends. And what does it depend on? Let's see. So I'll just, I just show you what the formula is, because as always, I will link them in the description description below for you to get more details of the specific math because I filmed this and it took one hour and I don't think anyone is going to sit through one hour. So I'm just going to summarize and refilm it. This is the third time I'm refilming and summarize it instead. So I am going to show you what the formula is and I'll explain the formula instead because it makes more sense to explain it and give you the intuition of what they mean. Okay, so this is the fee, and Q is the quantity, R is Roman tokens, L is Lisa tokens. So we are exchanging and then we're paying Roman tokens. So we're basically changing. Rowan tokens to Lisa tokens, and this is a fee formula. And what I want to what I want to say is that if you go back to the form the episode that I have, I'll link it up as well. The episode that I have on how do you calculate impermanent loss? This is your this is your Uniswap model. So this is your no internal fee. So this is your no internal fee model in which you, it's basically the Uniswap model. So this Uniswap model is your no internal fee and you're basically calculating the difference. So small q is the change in, in tokens that you receive. And you're basically, you're basically, 
figuring out how much how much Visa tokens you get in exchange for Roman tokens that you put in. This is the internal no no fee model, and this is your is your internal fee model. And the key difference over here is this is this thing, right? If we have if if they're equal, so if we make this equal, then we will just go to a full no internal fee model. And we also add some parameter over here so that you can have more form of customization, more variables to play around with to affect the fees payable. And and you can so this variable over here we can have it in three different scenarios as well. Equals zero, equals one, more than one. So if it's zero, so you know this can be whatever it is, it is, is dependent on this parameter. And this parameter can be, can be zero, and it means that we use the no fee model. And that means we use the Uniswap model. If it's equals to one, that is, we use the, Yes, internal fee model. And if it's if it's more than one, we have huge fee. And these fees are are bad for traders, but good for liquidity providers. Because one of the biggest things that as as I also talked about in the Banco episode, is that liquidity providers are usually at a huge risk, at a huge um, vulnerability when there's a huge arbitrage going on. So for example, if a trader knows that there's a huge arbitrage opportunity coming up. They're going to be making huge trades. And usually this goes to the detriment of the liquidity provider because they are the ones suffering the loss. It is a zero sum game in this scenario. So how do we prevent that? We prevent that by giving a big fee. So increasing this parameter to be a huge one. So that this fees, this fees, it goes back to liquidity providers and arbitrage traders. I mean, they're, they're earning anyway. So they're actually sharing the profit back to liquidity providers who exist in a good way to allow this opportunity to be given to arbitrage traders. Does that make sense? It, it basically, this huge fee is just profit sharing for arbitrage traders, that's it. So that is, that's the general scenario and that's what I want to talk about because the symmetric addition is the same everywhere. I've had two long episodes talking about AMMs. I think you're tired about hearing it. So I want to give you a different, different perspective to talk about, which is your internal fees. Internal fees, external fees, how do we look at internal fees? How do we affect internal fees? How do we change internal fees so that it is a bit of a more fair system so that liquidity providers are not constantly suffering impermanent loss? This thing is basically to make up for impermanent loss, period.